Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about one of the main missions of the 144,000 and that multitude that no man can number. Okay. You know, we've done a few classes lately for those guys or on those guys or to those guys because it seems like there's a shift in the spirit going on these days mm -hmm. and those guys are kind of gearing themselves up for the work that they have to do yeah it seems as if you're hearing more from people who suspect that they might be 144,000 well on that you know there's really no way to tell who is 144,000 who is not that's why you see a lot of times in the videos I'll speak about the 144K and the mass multitude as if they are the same. Mm -hmm. It's because we can't tell them apart. Mm -hmm. You know, they have similar missions. They will be standing together when the war is over, when all said and done, they will be all mingled in together. You won't be able to tell who was who. The only difference is that the 144,000 are the forerunners. They kind of learn everything first before they teach the rest of us. Right. But in the end, they all look the same. They all sound the same. They all are on the same mission. So basically, they are the same. So... With that being said, I guess one of the questions that I have is, I know the Third Testament tells us that um, these people don't necessarily know who they are um, and that we or whoever they are shouldn't necessarily call themselves 144. Um, and why is that? Well, they don't know who they are because they're being led by the Spirit. First of all, and second of all, there's not been a lot of information until the Third Testament to explain who they are. Mm -hmm. And then they're told not to identify themselves because they bring pain. They bring on themselves. They bring persecutions and make things hard on themselves by identifying themselves. That reminds me of a dream I had not too long ago. I uh, covered it in a video, so I'll briefly talk about it here. How there was these guys who were arguing about who was 144,000 and who wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was two of them going back and forth when the authorities showed up and arrested both of them. Right. Carried them both away. And at first they were happy to go until they saw they were getting ready to get thrown into the paddy wagon. And all of a sudden they wanted to recant their statement and say that they wasn't 144,000, but it was too late. You know, they right. drug them on off. Yeah, because, you know, we still are. And still will be wrestling against um, powers and principalities that are out here. And they definitely don't mean to. Um, well, they're definitely not for our good, not for the good of the Father. Yeah, they want to destroy him just like they did back in during the Messiah's time. Mm -hmm. They actually were able to kill the 144,000. And they completely annihilated them. And, you know, they would like to do similar now. It's just that, you know, it's the time we're in. They're actually able to take their rightful place and to actually fulfill their missions. And like we said, alongside a multitude that no man can number. OK, so what is this mission that they have? Well, we're looking here in Matthew chapter 10. They have several missions, but this one in particular is actually healing people. Healing people. Matter of fact, read Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. OK. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand so now this is the first mission this is you know what they recognize that they have to do up front that's to tell everybody that the kingdom of heaven is at hand now and it is available for anybody who wants to live in that kingdom it's just a matter of recognizing how it is that you would get your green card so to speak how you how you become a citizen of the kingdom and briefly what would you say um, the kingdom is just in today's words. The commandments, the statutes, mm -hmm. and the judgments. Mm -hmm. One who would go in and would read, practice, apply, understand, whatever you want to call it. Um, Exodus chapter 20 through 23. Once they start following those laws, that's the book of the covenant. Once they um, follow that covenant, they automatically become citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, and um, I also want to include um, the virtues of Hermas as well. You know, it tells us that uh, by learning and doing these virtues that we will be allowed to 
um, go into the kingdom, you know, without them, you can, you might see it, but you won't go in. Well, the, you, the covenant is the way in, mm -hmm. but without Hermes, you won't be able to survive in there. Okay. You, you won't be able to live in there. You know, that's what it means. You'll be able to, to get there, but mm -hmm. you have to understand Hermes, okay, you know, how sense. to control your anger, how to control, mm -hmm. um, your um, patience, your patience right. and you know all of the other virtues you have to take on those virtues you know and, and that's the problem with people who recognize the old testament and they don't recognize the new testament which the shepherd of Hermes would be a new testament era book mm -hmm. they understand the laws and so they are able to get to the door of the kingdom but because they don't have the love that was taught in the second era they won't actually be able to survive there that's good that praise, makes sense. Yeah. Praise Abba. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> all right. So let's go on to verse eight. Okay. Verse eight says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So here is one of the first missions after it tells us to speak about the kingdom of heaven. It tells us to heal the sick, mm -hmm. to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. Um, this is part of what their mission is, what they are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I say we because I include myself in this multitude that no man can number. Right. You know, one striving to be part of that mm -hmm. number. Um, so this is what we are supposed to be doing here. Mm -hmm. Now let's jump over to Mark chapter 16. Verse 17. Okay. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Yeah. So this right here is along the same lines. Telling them, except now it's saying anybody who believes. This is one of the signs. Mm -hmm. Is that they will be able to cast out devils and speak in, in tongues. Right. Now go to the next verse. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that's the part that I wanted to bring out here is how it's talking about how they'll be able to lay hands on the sick mm -hmm. and heal the sick. Mm -hmm. We've learned in the last part back there in chapter 10, which chapter 10 is all it, the whole chapter is about these guys. We did a cold class on it way back long time, 2019 on Matthew chapter 10 mm -hmm. because the whole chapter is it's like it's geared toward the 144,000 and okay. that and that multitude so it gives a lot of instruction in there but Mark and 16 is kind of talking to all believers and it's saying one of their things to do is to lay hands on the sick right I just wanted to bring that point out that we all have this power Next, we want to jump over to James chapter 5 and verse 14 as it gives us instructions on how to do so. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, this right here gives us specific instructions on how it is that we're supposed to heal, how it is that we're supposed to be healed. Mm -hmm. Now, notice here that it says for them to anoint them with oil. Right. We're going to hear about this oil in a minute, how it is actually unnecessary. But if we look further down in this chapter, we'll see why it is that this oil is talked about. So you said unnecessary? Yep. Okay. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's look at verse 15 before we find out how unnecessary it is. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now see, that's the purpose of the oil. Mm -hmm. And we may need to come back to this verse here because this oil is related to the forgiveness of sins. This, this, anoint, this anointing of the oil and the laying of hands in this prayer is actually causing this person to be forgiven of their sins, which is what's allowing them to be healed. Mm. we've done mm. yeah we've done several classes um and i'll link them at the end of this video on how sin is related to our illnesses and our pains sounds like you're about to go into uh the third testament chapter 43 we're going to touch on that <laughs> one right we're going to touch on that one um um just briefly but we're going to look at chapter 62 because we're talking about the mission here okay. of these guys 43 kind of talks about everybody but right. chapter 60 gets more into um these specific individuals that we're talking about here okay but matter of fact let's jump over to the third testament of the bible and look in chapter 43 okay 
specifically down here in verse 12. All right. My people, the true healing balsam that is able to heal all illnesses originates from love. So now here is a, at first sight, it kind of looks like a contradiction because back there he was saying lay hands on him and put oil on him. But now he's saying that this healing is originating from love. Mm -hmm. Read verse 13. Love with your spirit, love with your heart and love with your mind. And you shall have strength enough to heal not only the illnesses of the body or to give consolation for small human miseries, but will also know how to resolve the spiritual mysteries and the great anguish, confusion and remorse of the spirit. So here it is. And to me, it sounds like he's saying that the oil is not necessary. OK, so why was James talking about oil then? Mm -hmm. Well, because. Like we said, sin and illnesses go together. Right. Even though we have the ability to heal a person with pure love, what happens when they commit sins again? Or what happens when they go on and do the same thing that was causing the illness again? Mm -hmm. It kind of comes back on them. Mm -hmm. So this is why I believe the Messiah was always tell people, to go and sin no more. Right. So where we read it in the Third Testament, we have this ability to heal people simply by using love. And it's going to give a little bit more instruction here. It's important that the person doesn't do the same thing that caused their illnesses in the first place. Okay. Now let's look at verse 14. The balsam resolves the great trials, illuminates calm sorrows, and melts away the chains of oppression. And 15. Men who have been bought to despair by science shall return to health and life with the touch of that bosom. The spirit that has parted shall return to the word of love of the brother who calls. So we have this bosom here. And remember up there in verse 12, it says that this bosom originates from love. Right. So I guess while some would call them faith healers, you could actually call them love healers mm -hmm. because that's where the power is coming from. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is it's not necessarily the oil that heals. It's the faith and the love. Faith and the love. love that that it's not necessarily laying on of hands either. We're going mm -hmm. to find out here. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to jump down to chapter 48 and we're going to look at verse 22. Okay. This is the time in which the divine light shall shine plainly in my followers who shall exhibit the gifts of the spirit by showing that they do not need earthly goods nor material sciences to perform charity and work prodigies. They shall heal in my name, curing the hopelessly ill, transforming water to healing bosom and raising the dead from their deathbeds. Their prayers shall have the power to calm the wind to assurge the elements and combat epidemics and evil influences. So it's talking about the powers that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, all we have to do is learn how to harness these powers. Right. This is why the Messiah gave us demonstration after demonstration back there in the day. It wasn't that he was showing off. Mm -hmm. He was clearly showing us that all disciples have these abilities. Mm -hmm. And like we said, we just have to learn to harness them. Right. But we notice right here where he's talking about this specific time. He says, this is the time in which the divine light shall shine plainly in my followers who shall exhibit these gifts. Mm -hmm. And so this is the time we're in now where we're actually being called upon to go and to actually share these gifts with humanity. Yeah, this is a time in which, you know, when he said that you will be able to do greater things than I am doing. This is that time. Absolutely. Now, let's finish out this uh, lesson here with verse 23. The possessed shall be relieved of their obsessions, their persecutors, and their oppressors before the word, the prayer, and the power of my new disciples. So it's talking about, you know, a lot of power these people have mm -hmm. simply through prayer and love. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's go on to chapter 60, which is work in accord with the spirit of Christ. Okay. This was actually the first chapter out of the third testament that I ever taught on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It was because I wanted to learn how it was we were supposed to be these new ministers in this time, how we were supposed to work in accord. Just like it says, what it was, well, how this was supposed to actually look, right? what we were supposed to say and even how we were supposed to say it. So let's look at verse 38. Heal all ills, 
those of the body as of the spirit. For you have the mission of comforting, strengthening, and healing your fellow men. And yet I ask you, what help will you transmit to those who need it if you yourselves are ill? What peace can emanate from your spirit if it is stirred by worry, suffering, remorse, and low passions? So here it is talking about this mission and how these guys have this mission, mm -hmm. you know, is part of what their jobs are. You know, mm -hmm. it ain't about getting people to be convinced that you are 144,000 or, or that you are part of that number. Mm -hmm. It's not about vanity. It's actually a work that these people have to do. Mm hmm and we found out in the previous section that, you know, we're in that time where we're called to actually do this work. And we're going to see that said again here in this chapter. But this one here is talking about how we actually have to heal ourselves as well. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of the virtues come in. You know, so many times when we think about healing, we all always tend to think about our physical bodies, neglecting that. A lot of us need healing from different things like, you know, as we were talking about anger, patience, yeah. uh, self-control, uh, things like that. So I think it's saying that you can't expect to heal someone else when you haven't taken care of these things yourself. Yeah. So that brings us to, like you said, the Shepherd of Hermes. It's important to understand those. And I'll give a link to a playlist we did on that one. Um that's a very important class. That's why you guys hear me call this channel Hermes Academy. Um, it was founded on the principles of the Shepherd of Hermes. So y'all be sure to stick around and check out that playlist at the end of the video. But let's look at verse 39 right quick. You can only offer to your brothers that which you have stored up in your own heart. So we have to, like you said, we have to separate ourselves from these things that are causing us these illnesses. Mm -hmm. And then we are able to go on and heal others. But, you know, in the meantime, I would, I would advise people to practice healing first mm -hmm. because part of my own testimony, it was a long time before I was able to embrace all of the virtues of the shepherd of Hermes. And I'm still working on that every day. But while I was in that learning process, I was practicing healing people mm -hmm. even before they knew it. You know, I wouldn't say anything to them. Sometimes I would ask them, could I pray for them? And sometimes I wouldn't. I would just go ahead and do so, praying for their illnesses. And before long, they started gaining confidence and I started gaining confidence in the ability to heal small illnesses, toothaches and belly aches and that kind of thing. And then it went on to bigger things like it says the um, people who are suffering from mental illnesses and even, you know, bigger illnesses like even cancer and stuff like that. Right. Mm hmm. So we have a, my point is, is that even though we have a lot to learn, you know, there's nothing that should be holding us back from actually, you know, trying to carry out this mission here. Mm -hmm. We we do have some time to learn, but, you know, there's coming a time when we're really going to have to um, do this work. Like we'll see down here in verse 95 of this same chapter. OK, I have given great gifts to my chosen ones. One of these is the power of healing, the balsam, so that with that gift, you may fulfill a mission that is one of the most beautiful missions among humanity, since your planet is a vale of tears where there is always pain to be found. So this, like we said, this is one of the missions, one of the main missions mm -hmm. that these guys have um, It's actually part of his plan for these guys to carry out this mission mm -hmm. while the rest of the planet, the whole world is getting sicker and sicker. These guys at the same time are gaining their power to actually heal the sick. Okay, I have a, I don't know if this is a question or a statement, but, you know, you start gaining and you start practicing and you start preparing, well, not practicing, but preparing yourself to be able to heal. And then you, you start using these powers to heal, but then the person don't get healed. Well, is that... Your faith, you know, it reminds me when the uh, disciples said, well, you know, as the Messiah, why can't we heal? And he said, it's because of their faith. Is it something to do with them or or is it just that person is just not meant to be healed? Well, the main reason is because they're still in the sin that's causing them mm -hmm. to be sick in the first place. Like if it's a diabetes or if it's, you know, um, even a mental illness or something like that, sin 
causes these illnesses. Mm -hmm. And so even though a person, you may pray for them and they may feel better now, if they turn around and do the same things that was causing the illness, they're going to get sick all over again mm -hmm. and it's going to appear that they're not being healed at all. Mm -hmm. And then some illnesses actually take fasting mm -hmm. and prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something we're going to just be able to lay our hands on just like the disciples had trouble with some illnesses. They, they couldn't heal him. And then when they went to the Messiah, he told him that, you know, this one takes fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about fasting from food. We're actually talking about doing charitable deeds for others, mm -hmm. concentrating on other people so that we can gain more power in our healing process. They they will and we will. Mm -hmm. Part of fasting is abstaining from sin. Mm. So if the person, mm. you know, seems to be not able to be healed or their healing process is going slow, if they were to actually fast, they would abstain from the sin that's actually causing them to be sick in the first place. You know, when we first started this here, I would uh, question the father and say, well, how is it, you know, a lot of people ask this question, well, how is it that a newborn baby, you know, gets sick and and all that stuff but you know time and time and over again the father always seemed to bring it up to me that this person had a past life yeah they, and so when you do have those questions about people saying well how can how can you say that it's sin that's causing the illness and this baby was just brought into the world and he has sickle cell anemia or he has well this child had a you know, this child's a spirit and that spirit had a past life. Yeah. And children, we read in the Third Testament that some of these children are experiencing pains even in the womb. Mm -hmm. So they are gaining these marriage. We gain marriage through these pains and these pains are necessary for our salvation. We have to mm -hmm. understand that mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. you know, basically two ways that we can gain the merits we have to have to go into the kingdom of heaven. Don't let nobody fool you. The kingdom of heaven must be earned. Mm -hmm. You have to earn your way in there. Right. And there's two ways to get there. One way is through charity, doing love deeds for your brother, actually doing stuff for people, um, giving, sharing, working for them, helping them, doing stuff for people. That's what the, the Messiah when he was said when he was talking about love for our brother. But the other way is pain. Mm -hmm. If we don't gain enough merits through our charity the other way that we gain our merits is through pain even smashing our finger or having illnesses or anything like that that brings us pain and suffering actually gains us the merits we need we can get ahead of it like you said through fasting and prayer mm -hmm. we can get ahead of it but if we don't we're going to have to have these merits and you know, sadly, there's some of these children, like you said, they've come into this existence, right. living past lives right. that, you know, we don't know anything about what they did in their past lives. Mm -hmm. We just blessed to be their parents in this one. But we don't know who they were in their past lives. And if they're experiencing things as children, they're making up for something they did. Right. You know, something something happened in their previous life that's causing them this pain and stuff now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's look at verse 96. Verse 96, by means of this gift, you have a vast field in which to sow consolation according to my will. And I have deposited that bosom in your being amongst the tenderness of your heartstrings. You have enjoyed it before its prodigies you have bowed. Your hearts have softened when faced with the sufferings of men. And you have walked always on the path of charity. Talking about how many people are in need of this healing. And so it's one of their missions, one of their jobs is to be able to comfort mm -hmm. these people when they do fall into these illnesses. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's a big part of charity, being able to, to comfort someone. That's a great thing. All right, let's look at 97. Continue giving that bosom that is not found in your hands, for it overflows in a look filled with compassion, consolation, and understanding. It follows through good thoughts and becomes healthy advice and words of light. Now, see, this is important to understand on how this healing process works. Mm -hmm. You know, once we pray for somebody, uh, sometimes it's miraculous. Right. Or it p appears to us that the pain just simply goes away. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it comes through, like it says here, good thoughts become healthy advice. Mm -hmm. And so we've just prayed for somebody. And then all of a sudden we start thinking 
on what it is that's actually causing them their pain. The spirit brings to us what it is that's causing them mm-hmm. their problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's happened to me several times. Or else I'll say, well, have you ever tried this? You know, maybe you should try this here. I'm just thinking about it. I forgot about that. But you can try this here right here and it might make you feel better. And, and so that's a part of the process. Mm-hmm. And so and. Like we said, it's not found in the hands. The hands are are a part of it. We we're told to lay our hands on the person, but it's more as a uh, material manifestation because you know we, we love to to be able to see stuff. Yeah, and I think that's what the oil is for as well as well as the the laying of the hands. Maybe building up a little bit of mm-hmm, faith there, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. then the spirit starts taking over. Right, and then that's when the understanding comes. And like I said, a lot of times it's something that's going on that we just don't realize what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, they may be doing something wrong, maybe eating something wrong or not eating something right or something like that. And then our spirit brings to our attention and says, Hey, well, what about this? Or what about that? Mm-hmm. And it turns out to be, to be the exactly. solution. Yeah. Um, one of the examples I can give is our child was suffering from a toothache. Mm-hmm. And then after praying for him, immediately praying for him, I remembered, hey, don't we have some antibiotics, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, this is he has an infection in his tooth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and a few days later, he, the infection was all gone. Right. And that's that's the way it works a lot of times. Not mm-hmm. always, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, sometimes it, it does come in this manner. Right. All right. Let's look at verse 98. OK, verse 98. The gift of healing has no limits. Never forget that you are saturated with it. If pain makes you a victim, it is because you are subjected to a testing. Do not forget my teaching if you cannot remove the pain with that bosom. Forget instead your own sufferings and put your thoughts in others, those for whom the sorrow is greater. That is when you will see prodigies in yourself and in your brothers. Now, this is also important here. A lot of big points are made in here. First of all, is that not all illnesses will go away. Mm-hmm. Some of them are there for a testing. Yeah, you know, um, I can't remember exactly what chapter, but the father says that we are actually are given these bodies, given this flesh, so that they are a way for him to test us. Yeah, he does use our bodies to put the pain on us, and pain brings us closer to mm-hmm. him. You Every know? single time. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> first one of the first things we start doing is start yep. praying. <laughs> And so when we find ourselves under one of these tests like this, you notice what it says there is to stop focusing on ourselves. Yeah. Forget instead your own sufferings and put your thoughts on others. Yep. Start praying for others. And I found this. It works not only just for healing and for pains and stuff, but it it works for a lot of stuff. Yeah. You do that often. You know, you you just start. You know, like when we are going through something, you will say, have y'all, are y'all praying for other people? Stop thinking about yourself and start praying for other people. Yeah. Even, even when I'm working on projects related to this ministry or something, if I can't figure something out, you know, I'll put it down and actually just go start praying for random people, Mm -hmm. you know, and you know, that has worked now. I, that's one of my main tools, you Mm -hmm. know, when I'm trying to figure stuff out or something's not working right. You know, one of the main things I'll do is start concentrating on other people realizing that you know what that you know people got more problems than i got you what know? it says for those those for whom the sorrow is greater yeah and that goes to what you were saying earlier how that's actually a charity you're actually mm-hmm. doing charitable deeds mm-hmm. and that's part of fasting mm-hmm. right to pray for others is a way of fasting it is and so doing that fasting is actually going to get you healed. You going to actually see these prodigies or these miracles in your own life when you're able to concentrate on others that are in more trouble than you are. Right. All right. The last section we're going to look at is down in 106 of chapter 60. It says, I will give you the command to rise and go to work, for it will be a time of so great and clear signals that you will hear the voice of the spiritual world as well as that of this one. Marking by events that the hour of your struggle has arrived, it will speak to you spirit to spirit and guide you on the path. That's a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And notice how right here it says that we're going to be commanded. 
We're told to work in silence. We're in the, the half hour of silence now. We're in this preparation time now where everybody's learning. Everybody's getting back in touch with the law. Mm -hmm. Everybody's learning how to pray. You know, when all of this, you know, learning process is going on, we, we're practicing our healing now. But we're learning here that there's coming a time when we're actually going to be sent out on this mission. To go to work. To go to work. You know, right. it's going to become a full-time job. It's something we're doing now, like we said, just practicing. But there's coming a time when we're going to get these great and clear signals mm -hmm. telling us that our mission has started and these people are going to be put on the road to mm -hmm. actually go find these people and heal them. Right. I believe it's going to come through and during the most apocalyptic times, the most tribulous times, um, sorry to say, is going to be when the world's going to need this healing. Mm -hmm. They're going to need somebody to come in, give them comfort, give them healing. And, you know, it's going to be a time when they need that love to help them with these struggles. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like you said, it will be that time when they need um, because there might not be no doctors and well they're not going to be any doctors right mm -hmm. you know once you stop paying these people down there at them hospitals <laughs> they're not going to be quick to come and try to help you i'm sorry to say it you know once right. he realizes that his hospital has been destroyed and he has no income coming in anymore he's going to worry about himself and his own family mm -hmm. and he's not going to be willing to make house calls to come and see about you and your particular ailments so the days of bringing you a chicken it might not be so. Well, for a little while <laughs> until he gets hungry enough. And then, yeah. Yeah. You, you, it might, those days of bringing him the chicken might be coming back. When he, that'd be the only thing he have to eat, you know. Right. But notice right here it says, and he, it says, I will speak to you spirit to spirit to guide you on that path. Right. And this is important to understand because we don't want to just jump out there half cocked. Mm -hmm. We don't want to just run out there um, on our own. We wait for this signal that we heard about that at the beginning of this verse. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be guided internally, guided spiritually on where it is that he would have us to go and what it is that he would have us to do. Mm -hmm. We just need to be prepared and have the confidence to actually do so, know what to do. Right. And it, it, I think it's important for us to um, see also that it says, I will speak to you spirit to spirit, um, that you just don't have a word from somebody else and says, you know, go do this and go do that. You you will be receiving these instructions, this guidance from him, mm -hmm. and it will come through, I guess, your conscious. Yeah, it's going to come through your conscious and to, through your intuition. Mm -hmm. Maybe even your dreams. Right. Those are the three ways he communicates with us. It could come through dreams as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get it through a dream, um, it's probably going to be more prophetic. That's how the prophets get their messages through dreams and such. But he can, it can come through to intuition. It can come through the consciousness too. All right, let's look at verse 107. Yet, yeah, before you go to humanity as teachers, you will come as doctors. And when you have quieted their pains... They will be able to drink from the well of pure water of my word. Seek first the wounds, the sores, the sicknesses, and cure their ills so that you then may reach their spirit. So this is why I was saying that this part of the mission is even more important than teaching. Mm. Because it says before we can become their teachers, mm -hmm. we're actually going to have to become their healers. Mm -hmm. And I have personal experience here, too. You know, even down at the local church where I was trying to, you know, trying to teach them this and trying to teach them that it was only when I was actually able to lay hands on them and cure a couple of their minor illnesses and ills that you know they actually started listening and paying attention mm -hmm. you know that's what you know actually got me a foothold in there was when they realized that you know I have some of this power that's being taught I have some of this balsam I should call it and then they was willing to hear well, I think you uh, went from being ignored and laughed at to not being called uh, names or being ignored anymore. They were actually seeking you and actually calling you up there to, um, yeah, to they, heal them. Yeah, they was actually wanting me around after that point. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next verse. Go to your brothers like Jesus in the second era, bringing before my word the healing bosom. And what is the bosom? Oh, disciples. Is it the water of fountains blessed and made medicine for the sick? No, people. The bosom of which I speak is in your heart. 
I deposited there as a precious essence and only love can open it to rush out like a torment. And this is like we said, that's what the Messiah was talking about when he said to love our brother. Mm -hmm. This is where this power is going to come from. Mm -hmm. When you wish to pour it out over some sick person, it will not be your hands that anoint them, but the spirit inuated with love, charity, and consolation. And there, where you direct your thoughts, the prodigy will be worked. So we're instructed to lay hands on them, mm -hmm. but the power is not in the hands. Mm -hmm. The power is in the heart. The power that the hands are just a conduit mm -hmm. that where the mm -hmm. energy is kind of you can imagine the energy flowing mm -hmm. from your heart, down your arm, through your hand and into whatever is causing these people, this ailment and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will be able to work in many ways upon the beings and elements of nature to bring consolation to all. I tell you also. Do not fear illnesses and be patient and merciful with all. Yeah, don't be worrying about getting sick. You know, the time we're living in now, there's a lot of ailments and diseases and stuff going on. But we not to be worried about that. So it's saying like, don't be scared to say, I ain't put my hands on him. Yeah. Or, you know, okay, I ain't put ain't my hands in, on her. Uh -uh. Can't go in that room with that yeah, person. Yeah. You know, I remember one time my grandmother was was real sick. And she didn't know what was wrong with her. And she didn't want me to come in the room. She was like, I don't know what's wrong. Don't come in here. You might get sick. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, Grandma, that, that ain't the way this works, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and so you have to be willing to push in because our father is going to take care of us. We're on this mission for him. So the last thing we need to be worrying about is our own selves. Mm -hmm. Right. One eleven. With regard to the possessed and those confused in their human minds, you may also cure. For you have the faculty as well and must put it at the service of those beings that have fallen into depression and oblivion. Free them and manifest this power before this incredulous. It is one of the great missions of this people. Carry light where there is darkness. Break the chains of slavery and injustice and prepare this world to behold the Lord and see themselves, their inner selves, with full knowledge of the truth. So we're talking about the demon possessed and those with mental illnesses here. Mm -hmm. But notice how it says to demonstrate this power before the incredulous. What does that mean? The people that don't believe. Mm -hmm. The people that have a hard time believing. Mm -hmm. Even those down at the church who don't necessarily believe that you know we can heal people. This will have the most or the biggest effect. Mm -hmm. You know especially like here in our local community you know where everybody knows one another everybody's you know related to one another one way or another you you know about the person up the street that has been suffering from mental illnesses for a long time well all of a sudden you come in contact with this individual that has this love and this balls them and is able to help them. Mm -hmm. And then they see it as a clear demonstration of this power that the Messiah, that our father is given to his people. Mm -hmm. And it goes a long way. Like I said, it breaks down those barriers mm -hmm. to where they're ignoring you at first because you're talking about feast days and mm -hmm. Sabbath days and mm -hmm. keeping the law and it don't, don't nothing make sense. Well, when you actually heal this person of this mental illness right before their eyes, now all of a sudden it does make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can't deny it at all. And this even goes back to what the Messiah told us. It, you can see back there in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, how everything he said has been covered in the Third Testament, kind of expounded on it. Yeah. And we only touched a few verses. Mm -hmm. There's whole chapters on illnesses and sicknesses. Matter of fact, we've covered a lot of those in these other videos that are popping up on the screen now. You guys can go check those out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get more detail on this. And in the meantime, let us know your experiences in the comment section. Yeah, we would love to hear about, you know, if you guys have had any experiences with um, healing, comforting, and um, how these things have worked for you. Yep, and we'll see you down there. All right, shalom, shalom.